hello. When I say hello, I mean thank you. When I say thank you, I mean I adore you. When I say I adore you, I mean when you leave the balloons brought in by your laughter behind on my ceiling, well, I like them better than flowers. My body is a garden rooted in gratitude. Time is a holy catastrophe of heirloom clock faces that don't quite fit my wrists. What I mean is I like my body best when I'm not worried about how much space it's taking up. My mother says that I'm like a bird. What she means is the whole world is my cage, but in my dreams, I can fly. And there's no such thing as the cage, meaning there's no such thing as time. So I say, thank you. Thank you when I mean hello. Currently, roughly 20% of American teens suffer from depression, including me. I have chosen these poems because they tell a story very similar to my own. This is a selection of poems by Sabrina Benheim from her book, Depression and Other Magic Tricks. The Loneliest Sweet Potato. I am at the grocery store because I feel sad. I feel sad because nobody is in love with me. Nobody is in love with me, yet everybody loves me. This is because I'm good at making other people feel good. Good at making other people feel good because I have a lot of practice on myself because I feel sad, but when I help other people, I don't feel so sad. At least for a while, until I get lonely. And I am uncomfortable in my lonely. So I practice making myself feel better by pretending I'm a normal person shopping for her groceries and not a very sad person trying to distract herself from crying. Crying gives me a headache. Headaches make me want to crawl into bed. Crawling into bed is what sad people do. What sad people do when they are lonely looks a lot like me at the grocery store. I look just like everyone else shopping for avocados and lemons, items no one refers to as comfort food. Comfort food makes me want to crawl into bed. Crawling into bed reminds me of two things. I am sad and I am alone. I am alone in the convent aisle where everyone knows that very important decisions are made and it is perfectly acceptable to stand around for too long. Stand around for too long and I'll begin to tap dance. Tap Dancing Lonely in the Condiment Isle is a great title for a book, I think to myself as I stand in line to reach the cashier. She seems surprised when I asked how her night is going. It's going all right, she says. Nothing else except cash, credit, or debit. She waves goodbye. Goodbye is the saddest word I know. The saddest word you know is my name. My name wanders the grocery store aisles and feels less sad because at least at the grocery store, nobody knows that there is nobody in love with me. Explaining depression to my mother. Mom, my depression is a shapeshifter. One day it is as small as a firefly in the palm of a bear. The next day it's the bear. On those days, I hide until the bear leaves me alone. I call the bad days the dark days. Mom says, why don't you try lighting candles? When I see candles, I see the flush of a church. It sparks a memory younger than noon. And suddenly, I am standing in front of her open casket. And it is at this moment that I realize that everyone I will come to know will someday die. But besides, Mom, I'm not afraid of the dark. Perhaps that's part of the problem. Mom says, I thought the problem was that you couldn't get out of bed. I can't. Anxiety holds me hostage inside of my house, inside of my head. Mom says, where did anxiety come from? Anxiety is the distant cousin visiting from out of town that depression felt obligated to bring to the party. Mom, I am that party, except 
I am a party I do not want to be at. Mom says, why don't you try going to real parties? See your friends. Sure, I make plans. I make plans, but I don't want to go. I make plans because I know I should want to go. I know at one point I would have wanted to go. It's just not that much fun having fun when you're not in the mood to have fun. So I go for walks, Mom. But my stuttering kneecaps clink like silver spoons, wrapped in strong arms with loose wrists. They ring in my ears like clumsy church bells, reminding me that I am walking on an ocean of happiness that I cannot baptize myself in. Mom says, happy is a decision. My happy is a high fever that will break. My happy is as hollow as a pinpricked egg. Mom, I'm lonely. When I say I've been super busy lately, I mean I've been falling asleep, watching Sports Center on the couch, in order to avoid confronting the empty side of my bed. My depression always drags me back into bed, and so my body is a skeleton, sunken city. My mouth a boneyard of teeth broken from biting down on themselves. The hollow auditorium of my chest swoons with echoes of a heartbeat. But I am a careless tourist here. I will never truly know all the places that I have been. Mom still doesn't understand. Mom, can't you see? Neither do I. A prayer, a spell. I am feeling better today, so I say good morning, and I mean it. Yes, today is a good day to wake up and be great. I am not alone because I feel alone with company. When I look in the mirror, I will see a reflection of all the gifts I am withholding from myself. Light hits everything at a different angle, and I have a habit of tilting my head. When the sadness water falls, I will let the salt cleanse the wounds that I cannot see. I will let dance parties be the hospitals I heal in. And if I need more help, I will let the people offering help me. If I need more help, I will let the medication help me. I forgive my body for being a machine after all. I forgive myself even when I am the last person that I want to forgive. Wherever I've come from, Wherever I'm going, I will remember the present as a place to start. Yes, today is a good day to have gratitude for the relentless pump of this heart, the way it does not know how to give up. So I exhale and I begin. <sighs>